boring bar. Oh, great. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. We're still uh, continuing with the Atlas Shaper setup and testing and learning process. And one of the kind of next essential tools to get going is the boring bar. So I actually had one in my junk pile. And I think this actually came with a bunch of miscellaneous items that came with the Shaper, I don't really remember. But uh, it wouldn't fit. It was way too big, so I've had to modify it. And then the, uh, the square broached hole for the tool bit um, was not broached fully, so I had to clean that up with a couple files. So let's cut away and look at that, and then we'll come back and uh, see if we can do some test cuts. I need to thin this blade by 66 thousandths. I'm going to start with a rougher, just rough it out. Not the greatest finish, but I think it'll be okay. Well, you can see that finish is not the greatest. That end mill was pretty dull, but uh, it'll work. Um, it did have the radius that we needed so that we get a smooth edge here. And you can see the, uh, hopefully that'll focus, there we go. You can see the weld penetration was not that deep, so that's why I wanted to make sure I just left the radius on there to give it as much strength as we could. All right, I got it all chamfered, deburred, so let's go see if it'll fit in the shaper. So off camera I used that same radius nose uh, end mill to take a little out of this weld over here. It's not perfectly symmetrical with the other side, but I didn't want to take any more out of that weld than I had to. There it is with the tool bit in there. A little worried about this grub screw. It's kind of small, but we'll try it. If it uh, if it holds, then fine. If it doesn't, I might have to uh, drill that out and retap it to the next size larger. But we'll 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 see what happens. This has been quite the challenge to set up. So this boring bar is a little bit long, but I don't want to. I want to get this test done, but I, I'll probably shorten this up or broach another hole through further back for the tool bit. Um, what I had to do, I had to move the vise as far forward as we can. I mean, we're right on the right on the very end of our T-slots here. And then uh, our, our sample workpiece is, is all the way to the front of the vise jaw, um, which is not ideal. I mean, it should be in the center. Um, but hopefully we can get this test done. Um, what I did to square up our tool bit here before I put the workpiece in, I laid a parallel across and by eye I made sure that our cutting edge was, was flat and parallel to 
to our vise. All right, and then I've just got some uh, layout lines here and I've, I've just lined up our X axis by I. What we're gonna do when we start to take our cut, I think the right way to do this, I'll get everything blued up, is we're gonna look to see if we get a cut on both edges of our cutting uh, tool. And then that, that way we know if we need to move, you know, right or left a little bit. Off camera, I already set up our stroke length. And let me just run through it here so you can see. So we're going past about a half an inch. And then on the back stroke, oh, more like three quarters of an inch. Um, that'll give the, the clapper box time to settle down. So I'm going to try it with the clapper. I think a lot of guys do it with the clapper box locked. So I'm not sure what's the best method. <laughs> we're, uh, we're just testing here. Trying to learn how to run the machine. Get a little light on here so I can see. Just just slightly. Oop. Well, that didn't work. I was a little worried about that, and the vise is tight, <laughs> unlike last time. Yeah, because we don't have a lot of clamping surface here. Okay, let me see if I can uh, see what I can do with this. Well, guys, it's been a couple hours, but I hopefully this is going to work for us. Um, I tried a couple different configurations with the vise. I remounted it long ways, a couple different positions. I just didn't like it. So I went ahead and went this way. I rummaged around and found some uh, 5 16 all thread, made a cross strap, got a V block. I got a little poor man's uh, stop block here just out of a spacer and a piece of threaded rod and a T-nut. And what I did, I came in with a square and squared up the V block. And before I put this in, I came in and I, I uh, lined up our, uh, our center line. So. I think we're ready to go, so let me uh, turn the machine on and let's see what happens. Okay, so before I start, when, as soon as I get a flat all the way across, then I'm going to set my zero on the down feed, and we've got a down feed 125 thousandths. All right, here we go. Hmm. All right, hold on. I'm going to check a couple things. Okay, I'm not sure what I was hearing, but uh, I've locked the uh, the clapper box. We still we got to get through some of these burrs and stuff from the uh, carnage that we had on the last attempt. So let's try it again. good all right well that wasn't good okay so I took a few minutes I had to shut the camera off and just kind of think about this and look at the setup and try to figure out what the heck's going on so I think I know what it is we've got a lot of stick out here so we've got some flexibility 
and when the cutter starts to cut, it's pulling, at least this is what I think is happening, it's pulling the, this boring bar down into the cut more, and then it, then it gouges in, and you saw what happened. The, the weak link, luckily, was the, uh, our, our, our hold down. So, I think what I'm gonna try is flipping our cutter over to the top. So we're gonna cut on the top of, of our test piece instead of the bottom. Uh, that way, if it flexes, it's gonna flex away from the cut. So, at this point, got nothing to lose, right? Let me uh, change the setup and we'll come back. All right, so I redid the setup. I got the cutter on the top. I also looked at the uh, at our edge and I hit it with the hone a little bit. It was actually, it was okay, but I just gave it a little clean up. All right, well, I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's just try it. Here goes nothing. I'm liking that better already. Stop for a second and set zero, and then we're going to get some oil on there. Okay, here we Well, that's a hundred thou, but I think our tool bit slipped. 
All right, let's give it one more try. Our tool bit was definitely slipping. That little set screw in the end there is just not adequate to hold it. But let's see how far we can get. <laughs> it's not liking it. All right, we're going to cut our losses and see what we got. Okay, let me uh, clean this up and we'll go over to the bench and take a look at it. Well, guys, that was pretty painful. But we did end up with something that kind of looks like a keyway. It's not deep enough. And I did check it with a piece of key stock. It's a little narrow. It kind of goes in. I mean, if you if we were doing it for real, when we got to our depth, we would have just offset a little bit and fed back up. Um, but yeah, we did learn some things though. <laughs> so what we learned is this uh, itty bitty set screw is too small. Our tool bit is is moving. It's moved quite a bit since the last time I adjusted it. So. And everything was was flexing. This bar is flexing. Our work holding was was moving around. Um, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is put a bigger. Well, I'm going to cut this off. This is too long. We'll probably take an inch off and rebroach it. I'm not sure if I got a quarter inch uh, square brooch. I'm going to have to look. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, a better holding solution would be an angle plate or an end plate uh, with a hole in it where you could just clamp it onto a plate so you get a nice rigid solid uh, support. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That was, uh, like I say, that was painful. Um, very slow process. But, uh, but we did learn uh, how not to cut a keyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, well, uh, I'll see what we can come up with for the next uh, Monday episode. All right, thanks for uh, stopping by, everybody. We'll see you next time. Got a V-block, and I made a little cross slap, or <laughs> a, a, a um, cross strap. <laughs> Boy, that was a tough one. <laughs>